But Matt, I want to give you an opportunity, if you don't mind, to talk about the head coaching hires because we just had breaking news. Raheem Morris is hired by the Atlanta Falcons or to be hired by the Atlanta Falcons. We had Jim Harbaugh hired by the Chargers and Dave Canales, a shocker, hired by Carolina. A reaction to those three? Well, obviously, the one that's of most interest in Kansas City is definitely Harbaugh going to the Chargers. And um, there's some heavyweights now in the AFC West between Harbaugh, Sean Payton, Andy Reid. And Antonio Pierce obviously had a great run as the interim with the Raiders. And and there's a lot of respect for Antonio Pierce and the Chiefs organization. Obviously, he was with uh, Steve Spagnuolo in New York. Um, Spagnolo tried to get Antonio Pierce on the staff in Kansas City, and he, he just wasn't ready to get into coaching yet. Um, they would they would love to have had him in Kansas City, and but now they're going to see him twice a year, and um, there's there's a lot of fear that feel that he's going to put together a good good program in in Las Vegas. Um, but otherwise, I mean, hey, Raheem Morris, I think is a is a guy who absolutely deserves another chance as a head coach. Um, some of the others, you know, with the names that are out there. I just can't imagine right now if you're an NFL organization, an NFL owner, and you're hiring a coach and Mike Vrabel and Bill Belichick are still on the sidelines. I just can't quite compute that. <laughs> Matt, you mentioned the coaching hires. Kind of give us a perspective of covering the Chiefs, and Andy Reid has won double-digit games now for nine consecutive years. What is it, aside from the X's and O's, that have made him so successful? And then, obviously, you got a lot of Taylor Swift talk, but Patrick Mahomes has been a bona fide superstar since he stepped on the field as a starter. What these two guys are like covering them on a weekly basis. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't really say that Andy Reid's a, a one-trick pony with Mahomes because he was winning double-digit games with Alex Smith before Patrick got here. And really, to me, you know, and I, I didn't have an opportunity to cover the Chiefs before Andy Reid. I, I came in during his tenure. But hearing the stories about, you know, some of the other uh, head coaches before that from, from guys who had been on the beat for a while and hearing the Todd Haley stories and, and even some of the, the Herm Edwards stories, um, the attention to detail and discipline is really, to me, what stands out with Andy Reid. Um, you talked to, and I think it was Sean Payton, who a number of years ago told us when he was in New Orleans that, you know, he could he could call up Andy Reid at any moment in time and know exactly where he was because he just has the same schedule year in and year out. Players know what to expect. Um, one thing you always hear about players, why they love playing for Andy Reid is that he communicates with them well. He's honest with them. Um, I, and I think that's something that really gets overlooked from a lot of head coaches as far as just, you know, shooting straight with players, whether it's good or bad. And and I think you certainly get that with Andy Reid. Um, I mean, it's definitely, you know, entertaining covering both these guys in, in Kansas City and Mahomes and Reid. Um, Andy is certainly more circumspect. Um, you know, he keeps he plays his cards close to the vest. So he doesn't always tell you a lot. And sometimes he keeps back some of the things that you'd like to know. Um, but he's, I, I will say one thing about him. I think he's funnier than a lot of people give him credit for when he, he can crack some jokes every once in a while and it stuns everybody. And, and I think the thing that surprised me the most about Patrick Mahomes is that he, even though he's been the biggest player on the planet the last few years, um, he still has time for everybody. I mean, he still takes, you know, time with his local media commitments and, um, does a lot of charity work in Kansas city too. Uh, the guy is indefatigable. I mean, he just seems to be able to be everywhere and do everything. I don't know how he fits in all of the uh, TV commercials and the, the charity events and football on top of that, but he finds a way to make it work somehow. It seems like Mahomes' parents did a good job. He comes across as somebody that was raised well. And by the way, Matt Derrick knows what he's talking about. He's got two books. One, Patrick Mahomes' Showtime, if you want to read more about Patrick Mahomes. And another book, At Last, The Chiefs' Unforgettable 2019 Championship Season, along with being on the beat there at ChiefsDigest.com. Matt, the, I started the conversation with the disrespect angle. I'm all just laid it out. You've got one of the all-time great coaches and one of the all-time great quarterbacks, and they're in the middle of a dynastic run, and they're four-point underdogs against the Ravens. Will they play that underdog role up? Absolutely. I mean, um, Patrick Mahomes does not need much motivation, but he will find it anywhere that he can. And and we've seen it. I mean, and sometimes the joke in Kansas City, one of his nicknames is Petty Mahomes. 
uh, because of just how much he can he can pick up some disrespect angles from just about anywhere. And that's a term of affection for the Chiefs fans. It's not it's not a, a slight at all. Um, but you absolutely they feel like that they are the underdog. And on top of that, they feel like they're the villain. Um, they certainly felt like that going into Buffalo and they're embracing that. Uh, and, and honestly, I mean, if you look forward, um, they're not talking about it, but everybody in Kansas City knows that it, you know, against either the 49ers or the, the, especially the Detroit Lions, nobody would be rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs. So they're kind of embracing it. And yeah, this, this point spread, getting the, the four points now, um, that's just playing right in to Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, both those guys. They are, they're, they're loving and relishing the underdog rule. Um, I don't know how the Chiefs became an underdog, but <laughs> they've been able to portray themselves that way, and they're definitely drawing inspiration from it. Matt, two-part question. Was the defense expected to be at a level where they're second in scoring in the NFL this year? And then how do they contain Lamar Jackson when the play breaks down and where Lamar is that is most dangerous? Yeah, I'm not even sure the Chiefs' defense expected them to be this good. I mean, they, they had high expectations, but they were talking like maybe a top five defense in training camp. And we probably should have expected it back then. I mean, because, you know, we were hearing from Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, you know, those windows in the secondary are pretty tight. I mean, and, and this was, I think, the certainly the worst training camp that Mahomes and the offense has had since I've been covering the team. And I've covered every year of Mahomes in Kansas City. So we probably should have had a clue that this defense was going to be pretty good. Um, but it was impressive the way that they just came out of the box built this way. You know, usually Steve Spagnuolo's defenses have needed time to gel. This one did not, and, and and I think it's just a testament to the fact that, you know, Brett Veach, the general manager, has helped get, you know, Steve Spagnuolo the types of players that he wants that fits his scheme and what he wants to do. Um, and I, I, I forgot the second part of the question. I was starting to go into it. I was just, no, I was just going to say, how do you contain <laughs> Lamar when the play breaks down? Because oh, yeah. that's where he's most dangerous. Yeah, and, and that's something that Steve Spagnuolo has had a lot of success with. I mean, they've had done a pretty good job with Lamar over the years. Uh, the Chiefs are three and one against Lamar. Um, the one loss, you know, coming on a late fumble uh, on a primetime game. Um, so they have done a pretty good job of trying. And, and what they try to do is just contain him in the pocket. They don't want him to get outside. They don't want him to be able to find any gaps up the middle. Um, their basic strategy is really let Lamar beat you with his arm. And, and if he beats you with his arm, they'll, they'll, they'll tip their cap to him. Uh, I think he's got a better chance of doing that this year because he has got so many, you know, receivers. Um, but one thing, you know, the Chiefs do is they their, their scout team kind of goes into cheat mode this week. Um, they have Chris Oladokun, who's their scout team quarterback, and they just give him carte blanche to, to run around and do everything that he can, like, like Lamar would. Um, and they use a lot of speed receivers and tell them to just play as physical as possible and do everything that they can to just try and mimic that that Baltimore speed and what they've got. And we'll see if it works. I mean, it's it's been a pretty good strategy for them in the past with mobile quarterbacks um, but there's no doubt that's that's the one thing that they like to do and and now last week against Josh Allen didn't work so much in the first half Josh Allen found some gaps they closed them in the second half I don't think they can get away with making second half adjustments against Lamar I think they need to be able to, to stop that from the get-go if they want to beat the Ravens Okay, Matt, prediction time. You got a minute here. You mentioned Chiefs were a dog against the Bills. They're obviously a winner. They're dogs against the Ravens. What do you got for a prediction? Yeah, I I, I really think this is a coin flip game. I have a hard time really deciding one way or the other. Um, I think it should be a low scoring game. I think both defenses will stand out. Um, at the end of the day, though, I mean, I got to go with the team that has Patrick Mahomes. That's usually the team that wins. And uh, I'm I, right now. I, I I think I'm leaning on 21-17 Kansas City. Visit Veasan.com to get current odds. Listen for free. Find showtimes and download Veasan Sports Betting Podcasts.